Hi guys and welcome to the next tutorial on the fidget spinner. In this lesson we're going to learn about how to create the bearing and also the cap. We're going to learn about creating new parts within an existing drawing. So you can see here if I spin around I've got the part on the other side as well. Um, and then the last lesson will be um, taking this and then putting it into an assembled part. Um, so the important thing today is learn about parts. You've got the parts here, so we've created the spinner already. We're going to look at these next few parts here. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to find your original drawing. So I've just created a copy here. You'll have one ready to go. So go into it. And the first thing we want to do is we want to say we want to create a new sketch. Um, so we're going to, I'm just going to click here, sketch, and then I'm going to select this um, top face here. So make that visual again. And then I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to go to here, rotate the view, all stuff you've done before. Now I'm going to draw two circles. Now I'm going to draw two circles. So the first circle is going to go from the center point here, pull it out to, doesn't matter at the moment, and then same again with the one in the middle as well. With those, I'm going to add the dimensions. So the dimension for the first one is going to be clicked here pull it out and we know from the previous drawing that this bearing here is 22 so I'm going to match that and put 22 as well and then for this inner circle which is the inner part of the bearing um, if you had a, if you've used been skateboarding before this is the bit that the the axle goes through the trucks and then you click on that and we want to do that as eight let's enter so that is all drawn in there now so we're happy with that we're going to click OK then we're going to extrude it up and select the part you want to extrude um, that is a little bit too high so we're going to bring that down to the right height which is eight millimeters because that was the thickness of the actual part Eight, sorry, not eight meters, eight millimeters. That's the part. And the important bit here is we don't want to add. If you click add, it means it's going to add it to this existing part and a new part won't appear. So this new bit we're drawing here is a new part. So you want to click new like that. And then you'll see it appear down here and it'll mean that it's a separate part to this. So we click OK. There we have it, that's our bearing drawn in. So what we're going to do now is, so we keep organized, and this is important when you're using CAD drawings, is just to click here, I'm going to rename, I'm going to call that bearing. Like so. So we've got one part here and one part here. And as we've covered before, when we're doing different parts or using these menus down the side, we can use the eye to hide them and like that. And that becomes really useful when um, we are trying to um, do complex drawings. So that's all good. What we do now is we're going to sketch on top of this bearing here. So I'm going to sketch on top. So I'm going to go sketch. I'm going to say I want to sketch on here. And then I'm going to view to the top like so. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to um, create a circle. The circle is just going to be a little bit smaller than the actual bearing because this is going to be like a plastic cap that goes on top. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to look at the dimensions probably around about 18 looks good for that. 
Um, so I'm going to dimension that one now. Click on there and put the dimension out. Change that to 18. And then what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create another one that's the same size as that one. And again, as we've covered in previous tutorials, easy way to do that is click the draw your circle like that. And click the equals and then just click that and then click that. Okay, that's that. And then we're going to draw um, one more circle and the final circle is going to be in the center. So again, click that and this time this one is going to be 4.5. So change that. Oh, it's done. Click a circle. Dimension that to 4.5. And press enter. So we've got our three circles drawn, 18 and 4.5, um, and the one the same size in the middle using the equals tool there. What we can do now is now we can um, finish that sketch, like so, and we're going to just give it a rotate, and this time we're going to extrude it up, not very far, so select that one. And I'm going to select this one like so. And what we're going to do is we're going to change that to, let's say, four millimeters. Like that. And like we did before, because this is a new part, we're going to click new. And we don't want to add it to this existing part because it's a, it's a separate piece. Okay, if you imagine that this is a piece that's 3D printed, it's another part here. So they're all separate pieces. Um, and then we're going to click uh, OK, like that. So you can see there that that sketch for is all good. Now what we want to do is want to want to add another feature to this sketch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just spin around the underside here, OK, like this. And just to make things a little bit easier, what we're going to do is we're going to um, hide the bearing like so. Um, and then we're going to just click that to reopen that sketch again. So I can see the, the geometry here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the extrude tool. I'm going to click this part here. Um, you can see it's gone the other direction. So the quick fix for that is to click that that way. Um, I want to add this to this part here, okay, because it's all going to be one piece. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is a nice little feature you can do with this as well is rather than trying to drag it to the same um, height as this surface here, you can just click this here and you can go um, up to face. You want to say, I want it to that face. And what it does is it puts it straight in line with that face for us automatically. Um, so you can see there now, um, if I OK all that, what we've done, if I hide the fit spinner, is I've created like a little cap. Okay, that's what I've created. That's all one part because we've, created, we've added that to that. So you bring those things back on. Okay, we can see now that's located nice in there. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to draw the other cap um, on the bottom face. So to do that, I'm just going to hide the bearing so I can see the part from before. I'm just going to click around here. I'm going to say I want to create a new sketch. I'm going to create it on here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a circle. And again, I'm not too concerned of how big that circle will be because what I can do is I can click that like so. And what I can do is I can use the equals tool just to select that and then select that geometry there. That means then they'll both be the same size. And then we're just going to draw um, one more circle. And that last circle is going to be 
just in the middle. And I'm going to draw that at five millimeters, just a little bit uh, bigger than the one before. So to do that, just simply get the, the dimension tool, pull it out, and we go to five. And enter. That's six, sorry. Change that to five. So that is all good. Now I'm just going to click OK, like that, and we're going to add the extrude to that, like so. Extrude that up. Now I think the last one was four, I think four millimeters. So let's just put that to four, same as the other side. And again, what I'm going to do is, this is a new part. I don't want to add it to that part. So I want it to be a new part. So new. Okay, like that. Um, and then we click OK because we're happy with that part there. And um, if we hide the spinner, you can see now we've got two parts that are um, slotted inside each other. What's nice about it is that we know that um, this is going to be super accurate because um, this is um, a five mil hole here. And this is a radius of 4.5. So we've got half a mil difference between those two there. So we know that they'll fit really nicely and well. What we'll do now is we're going to just um, bring everything back so you can see what we're doing, like so. Ah, I can see the problem here. What appears to have happened is that this extrude, I think, has gone the wrong direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit the extrude. And let's see if that works better. So that was the problem, you see. I had that set in the wrong direction. And again, you can see, quick fix, just editing that solves the problem. So now I can see that that is correct, and that is correct. Now to make this look a little bit better, what we're going to do is we're going to add um, a nice chamfer on the edge of here. So what we do is we go to the chamfer tool, it's next to the fillet tool, click the chamfer, um, maybe just reduce that down to like three before you go on there, just then click the edge and we can see. Uh, Mm, yeah, that that will work, I guess, that will work. And then we go on the other side, and then we can click that to three, like so. What we can do then is the last little bit we need to do is um, finish that, okay. That's okay, click. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, rotate, not rotate, I'm going to rename even um, the parts so we know what each part is. So this one, I'm going to call it um, rename cap part, cap top part, and then on no, rename cap okay good so those have all been renamed now so this really will show you that um let's just get rid of that bottom work that top work plane there you go see it better now and um, then we go to isometric to get a better view so what this really does show you is when we are designing in in CAD or parametric modeling, you create different parts to make your model. And if we were to, to manufacture this, all these parts would be um, printed separately. So we'd print this section here, the 3D printer, and then we'd print the two cap sections as well. Um, and the bearing would be what we call a standard component that is bought in um, and then used. So that's the idea is that we create separate parts to make one model 
In the next lesson, we'll look at an assembly drawing, and this is where we put everything together so that we can um, make it actually work on the screen. So by the end of it, you'll be able to um, actually spin this so it spins on the screen. But that's today's lesson covering um, parts and also how to draw the bearings and the caps.